So Romans 15, 14 to 33. Okay. Um, I myself am convinced, my brothers, that you yourselves are full of goodness, complete in knowledge, and competent to instruct one another. I have written you quite boldly on some points as if to remind you of them again because of the grace God gave me to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles with priestly duty of proclaiming the gospel of God so that the Gentiles might become an offering acceptable to God, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I glory in Christ Jesus in my service to God. I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I have said and done, by the power of signs and miracles, through the power of the Spirit. So from Jerusalem all the way around to Illyri, oh man, Illyricum, <laughs> I have fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. It has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known, so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation. Rather, as it is written, those who are not told about him will see, and those who have not heard will understand. This is why I have often been hindered from coming to you. But now that there is no more place for me to work in these regions, and since I have been longing for many years to see you, I plan to do so when I go to Spain. I hope to visit you while passing through and to have you assist me on my journey there after I've enjoyed your company for a while. Now, however, I am on my way to Jerusalem in the service of the saints there. For Macedonia and Achaia, Achaia were pleased to make a contribution for the poor among the saints in Jerusalem. They were pleased to do it and indeed they owe it to them. For if the Gentiles have shared in the Jews' spiritual blessings, they owe it to the Jews to share with them their material blessings. So after I have com completed this task and have made sure that they have received it, this route, I will go to Spain and visit you on the way. I know that when I come to you, I will come in the full measure of the blessing of Christ. I urge you, brothers, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit to join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. Pray that I may be rescued from the unbelievers in Judea and that my service in Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints there, so that by God's will, Oh no, so that by God's will I may come to you with joy and together with you be refreshed. The God of peace be with you all. Amen. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, as uh, Pastor Joshua announced, uh, we are coming to close uh, the study, this uh, pieces of Rome. I was supposed to uh, deliver a message. Uh, chapter 16, <laughs> then and, uh, two weeks ago, uh, one week ago, the NG suggested uh, to, to split the chapter 15 to two parts, and then uh, I agreed to take on uh, this uh, uh, last part of uh, chapter 15. Uh, first, uh, chapter 16 is full of uh, personal greetings, uh, the mentioning names a little bit uh, lighter than <laughs> <laughs> That's 15. And I look up to the, this part, my, my heart, very heart become very heavy. <laughs> and so as, you, as you know, this part is not, not about the uh, doctrinal uh, discourse uh, as uh, the previous chapters. It's pretty much about uh, the Paul's, uh, Apostle Paul's uh, the personal uh, testimony. Uh, the showing, uh, showing that uh, how uh, Paul lived up to uh, the gospel truth uh, he preached. Uh, that, that uh, when I look at these verses, that I, I feel yeah. felt very uh, yeah. the inadequacy <laughs> to, to deliver this message because uh, I found myself that far away from. Mm, the Paul's ministry and spirit. Is, uh, but uh, but uh, uh, one thing uh, I'm assured is that still I, I'm living in the uh, period of God's grace. Uh, still, uh, still I have time to catch up uh, what is missing, uh, unmin unfinished part that uh, while sharing this message, uh, God may uh, ignite my spiritual eyes, that, that ignite uh, the spiritual fervor 
uh, to myself and to all of you. <coughs> Let me pray shortly. Uh, most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, teaching us uh, this wonderful uh, uh, truth of your gospel, the gospel of Christ, the gospel of God, uh, through Romans Bible study. Uh, Lord, uh, we, we studied a lot, accumulated uh, the sound doctrines and knowledges into our heads, but uh, still you want us to bring those knowledges uh, to, from our head to the heart. That knowing is one thing, and living up to that is another, Father. Help us to bring up to the, the higher level that we may really put them, put them into practice uh, in our lives uh, so that we may uh, uh, glorify your name, uh, Father. Uh, may you uh, open our spiritual eyes uh, uh, to learn the Paul's and Apostle Paul's, uh, the gospel spirit, as is uh, the spiritual ambition, Father. Even though we are, uh, we, we are living in a different uh, time, different stages of life, uh, uh, we may learn something from him, Father. May you uh, uh, touch uh, uh, each person's heart as well as mine, uh, Father, through this uh, uh, time of uh, the worship and sermon. Uh, thank you, I pray in Jesus' name. In the last passage, uh, the Andy delivered, we learned to accept one another uh, just as uh, Christ accepted us in order to bring uh, praise and glory uh, to God. In Christ, with, an, with one mind and one voice, in harmony, we glorify God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The, for this, uh, Jesus came to this world as a human form and lowered himself uh, to be a servant of the Jews. Uh, in Christ, uh, the Gentiles and Jews all together uh, have uh, same hope and sing the praises of his name. In that sense, uh, uh, the Apostle Paul's ministry and life itself well exemplifies uh, this truth. As a Jewish man, uh, Paul dedicated himself in preaching the good news of Jesus uh, to the Gentiles. Uh, this part of Romans, the last part of Romans chapter 15, is concerning uh, his uh, like a personal uh, testimony to the Christians in Rome in terms of how he had lived up to the gospel truth. Uh, <coughs> uh, from verses 14, and to, to 15a, I, my, I myself am convinced, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with knowledge, and competent to instruct uh, one another. Paul already uh, knew that the Christians in Rome were full of uh, goodness, uh, filled with knowledge, and very good and competent to instruct one another. You know, it's not easy to talk about the gospel truth to these kind of people who are already full of goodness and knowledge and good and advising and helping one another. Sometimes I feel same sentiment here. <laughs> that as uh, many people see me as uh, the senior or missionary, but I feel that you, you guys are already uh, <laughs> full of goodness uh, and knowledge. <laughs> and uh, without me, you can help each other, advise each other. <laughs> Pretty much there are not many things for me to do. <clears throat> the same way, by the way, why did Paul uh, bother himself to write, write them quite boldly on some points uh, to remind them again? It is because he wanted to share the grace of God in calling him uh, to be a minister of Christ Jesus uh, to the Gentiles. 
uh, his personal testimony is not meant to uh, brave himself, uh, but to reveal uh, God's uh, the amazing grace, to show that what it means uh, to pursue God and uh, uh, to fulfill uh, uh, God's uh, purpose and destiny upon his life. Verses 15 mm, to 16, Yet I have written you quite boldly on some points to remind you of them again. Because of the grace of God gave me to be a minister of Christ Jesus uh, to the Gentiles. He gave me the priestly duty of proclaiming uh, the gospel of God uh, so that the Gentiles might become an offering acceptable to God, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Uh, God called Apostle Paul to be a minister uh, of Christ Jesus uh, to the Gentiles. As you, you already knew uh, in Acts uh, chapter 19, chapter, um, when the Lord appeared to Paul on his way to uh, Damascus, uh, he told them his divine call upon Paul's life, uh, saying to uh, Ananias, uh, who is the who is the spiritual mentor who later lay his hands upon the Paul. He said to Ananias, Go, uh, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name uh, to the Gentiles and their kings, uh, to the people uh, of Israel. Uh, since then on, Paul had lived uh, as a minister of Jesus uh, to the Gentiles. Gentiles. Uh, by proclaiming uh, the gospel, uh, the Gentiles uh, turned to the Lord and became holy and sanctified uh, by the Holy Spirit. When Paul preached the gospel uh, to the Gentiles, uh, <coughs> Jesus, the Lord, has worked in and through him by the power of signs and wonders or by the power of the Spirit of God. It was only by the grace of God, as uh, Paul mentioned. Once uh, Paul was an, an enemy, enemy of God. But out, uh, out of uh, his uh, uh, divine grace and mercy, uh, Jesus saved him from his sins and called him uh, to be a minister of Christ Jesus uh, to the Gentiles. Jesus gave him the priestly duty of proclaiming, proclaiming the gospel of God so that Gentiles might become an offering uh, acceptable to God. Through Paul's ministry, many of the Gentiles were not only saved, but also offered uh, their bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, as we learned in chapter 12. It was all that Jesus had accomplished uh, through Paul. When Paul thought about the marvelous work of God and his grace, uh, what was his response? Uh, look at the chapter 17. Therefore, I glory in Christ Jesus in my service uh, to God. I glory, I glory in my service to God. I glory in Christ Jesus in my service to God. The here uh, glory uh, means, refers to something exalt, you know, to show uh, or feel uh, a lively and triumphant joy, uh, to rejoice, rejoice exceedingly, very jubilant, elated. When, when Paul thought about uh, how, how the Lord uh, graciously, marvelously worked, uh, uh, through his life, he was greatly rejoiced uh, in Christ Jesus in his service to God. When you, when you look at the, um, Paul's life, uh, yeah, on a daily basis, uh, he died with Christ and resur resurrected with him. Uh, Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith 
in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Christ Jesus became the source of his joy and meaning of his life. As Jesus said in John chapter 4, verse uh, 34, my food is to do the will of him who sent me uh, and to finish his work. In the midst of a great suffering and hardships and persecutions, he greatly rejoiced, rejoiced in Christ. Uh, the service, the missionary work, was not anymore a burden or stress. It's, uh, rather, it gives him a great joy and peace and sense of victory and triumph and thanksgiving uh, filled his heart. He served the Lord uh, from the approval of God, not to gain approval to God, from God. He already got the approval, the credit from the Lord. God entrusted Paul with uh, such an amazing, uh, precious work of God in preaching the gospel uh, to the Gentiles. Out of great thanksgiving, he dedicated himself uh, to the priestly duty of proclaiming the gospel of Jesus to the Gentiles. Here I question to myself, <coughs> do I really enjoy, rejoice in Christ Jesus in my service to God? Then I, I couldn't answer like this. I pray that God may uh, restore uh, the joy in, in Christ in, in serving him. The last part of uh, chapter 19, he said, so uh, from Jerusalem all the way around to Illyricum, I have uh, fully proclaimed uh, the gospel uh, of Christ. As you know, the gospel started from Jerusalem and uh, spread out to the Asia Minor and, to the, and the later to the whole world. Paul uh, preached the gospel from Jerusalem uh, all the way around to uh, Illyricum. Illyricum is uh, uh, located uh, northwest of the uh, Macedonia, very far, far west uh, in the territory uh, the Paul Saint Paul uh, ministered. He has fully proclaimed uh, the gospel uh, of Christ. He have not. Uh, proclaimed partially, partly, the gospel of Christ. He, have, he had fully proclaimed uh, the gospel uh, of Christ. Uh, what is uh, his uh, inner motive and ambition? Uh, look at uh, uh, 20. It has always been my ambition uh, to preach the gospel where Christ was not known, so that I would not be building on uh, someone else's foundation. And you first hear about uh, the ambition. Uh, usually, it doesn't come with uh, some positive sense. Uh, <laughs> ambition and uh, some honest desire or determination uh, to, to be successful, you know, the dictionary meaning. Uh, to be successful and become rich, or powerful, or famous, and so forth. Uh, it can be good or bad, depending on the motives, uh, the situation. Here, mm, the ambition can be translated the aim, or uh, lively desire. Uh, all human beings, uh, most of human beings, people, tend to have uh, the ambitions uh, to be rich or uh, to be uh, successful, uh, to, to stand out uh, uh, the, the area he or she studies or work. The problem is uh, it only human, such a human uh, ambition, we are tempted to step, step on others to, to, op to go up the ladder of the success. Or, uh, we like to control others uh, to do what to do to get them to uh, what I want. It, it's, it could be very 
the destructive uh, human ambition. Also, those who have uh, uh, the human ambition are restless, uh, so the full of anxiety and stress. On the other hand, then then it is good not to could have any any ambition. What happens? <laughs> One's lack of ambition. <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> dead dog. <laughs> yeah. No 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 activation to excel excel. No no motivation to pursue uh, some perfection of something. Then nothing happened. And uh, no motivation to to the hard work. Just uh, content uh, with the living a uh, the mediocre uh, lives. The such such persons, uh, the job, the, the careers already remain uh, unfinished. We we instruct someone to do something uh, with uh, those people with uh, no motivation. Always uh, things are undone, <laughs> unfinished. <laughs> Like unfinished uh, basement. <laughs> <laughs> the what are the uh, the good uh, the biblical the ambition in terms of uh, in light of uh, the gospel truth? <coughs> uh, Jesus taught us uh, how to live, to love God with uh, all our hearts, with uh, all our mind, with uh, all our souls, and all our strength. It's not uh, God uh, uh, does not instruct us to live and to love Him in, in just mediocrely. No, it's uh, all our hearts and all our strength. The the love others as yourselves, and uh, be a blessing uh, to help others. So in other parts of the Bible, uh, fan into flames uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of God. And we learn, as you learn, Romans chapter 12, verse 11, never be lacking in zeal. It's like uh, the fervent desire to seek God uh, and His glory. There is uh, our the plan and desire is pretty much uh, being aligned with the will of God, the purpose of God, not seeking our selfish gain, selfish gain. Those who have uh, uh, the, the spiritual ambition, the biblical ambition, is uh, relentlessly pursue, pursue God and His righteousness. Then they are free from uh, the human, uh, human recognition. And no matter what happens their, to their lives, uh, they never stop. They are determined to finish the work God has assigned to them. That's the kind of thing, kind of biblical ambition uh, God wants us to wants us to have. What is uh, the Paul's ambition? Go back to the 20, verse 20. It has always been my ambition to preach the gospel when Christ was not known, so that I would not be building on someone else's uh, foundation. It sounds quite odd. It's uh, to preach the gospel where Christ was not known. It's, uh, it's like kind of ambition. <laughs> you usually see from people's heart. He determined not to preach the gospel where already uh, people uh, knew the gospel, heard about the gospel. You know, you know his calling determination very 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 unique. We cannot we cannot be generalized in the in the all the people's heart. You know, the people are in a different stage, different uh, different timing of life. But we we learn from something. Uh, learn learn something from here. Uh, Paul's the ambition. And he was a uh, like uh, the pioneer and a church planter, the carrying out. Uh, the gospel of God uh, uh, to the to the Gentiles. He does not. He did not want to preach the gospel where uh, let other people uh, put the foundation. 
he didn't like to be a, a free free rider. <laughs> and he wants to the the pioneer. Mm. Is it because to to shine his name, <laughs> to reveal his name? Oh, breaking that! I'm the pioneer of this church. <laughs> I'm the founder, uh, senior pastor <laughs> of this church. No. He, does, he did not rely on the human will or will power and human zeal. He humbly uh, relied on the power of the Holy Spirit and His grace. Uh, we cannot find any hint of a selfish motive or self-righteousness in Paul's life. He never, he never be uh, the complacent uh, what he achieved. He always uh, strived to look forward, not looking behind content uh, with what he achieved. He, he, he always uh, 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 strive to move forward uh, to the kingdom of God. He served God with uh, the willingness uh, and joy. Let's think about building on someone else's foundation. It, it, it can be interpreted many ways, but uh, I'd say that it's a uh, Last in our time, um, uh, it's not staying on our our comfort zone. Once uh, we 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 like uh, uh, the stability, the settlement, uh, the comfort zone. It's uh, it's our human human tendency. The problem is in our spiritual journey. When he when he the settle down uh, certain environment too comfortably. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, something not good might happen in our spiritual journey. Then we we uh, we become spiritually very uh, the dull and uh, the complacent uh, and uh, not 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 seeking God uh, very fervently. Only we. Uh, care about our self-seeking, the self-satisfaction, and uh, how people uh, 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 treat me with uh, dignity and respect. Once uh, we feel we don't feel like that, we are very uh, our hearts are very stirred, uh, complain complaining to people. Why? Why people do, do not recognize me? Do not give me due respect? You don't, you don't have any the incentive to work hard, motivation. But Paul said, I determined not to build on someone else's foundation. Rather, he chose uh, to pioneer, pioneer explore uh, new land. And uh, when, you, when you look at the construction industry, building uh, uh, laying down the foundation is not an is not an easy job. We we have to dig out the dirt, the the ground. When he until he find uh, find the rock, the foundation, and then put some concrete, and then fill the gap, and then we can build on the house. We have to dig the ground. We have to bow ourselves, dig the ground, lay down the foundation. Also, in a spiritual sense. Uh, we strive to reach out some unleashed people. It's very easy to talk about the gospel truth with already with someone who already knew the gospel. Then we, we share very uh, very common common things, topics. But it's it's not easy uh, to preach the gospel uh, uh, to the people who never heard of the gospel. Those who do not build on Someone else's foundation is like uh, uh, someone love to give, uh, not to receive. Their concern, their interest is not how, uh, what I am getting from this church. Of course, uh, we need to be nourished, uh, spiritually trained, equipped in the church. But uh, we we should go beyond that. Instead of uh, 
too much concern about getting something from the church. Those uh, people like Paul is concern is uh, what am I, what am I supposed to give to this church? What am I supposed to give to the people in this church? Their their prayer and, and the concern and desire is, uh, what can I contribute? What can I serve with this church? What can I fill in the gap in the, in this church? It's a uh, it, uh, our local church is uh, it never meant to be perfect. Always uh, there are gaps, there are deficient. Then uh, as a, as a spirit of uh, laying a foundation, we. We, uh, as a, the intercessory prayer of this church, we 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 pray for this church, uh, not demanding something uh, from others. Then we are willing to do something, even uh, to do to, to washroom, the cleanings, uh, to garbage pickup, uh, after worship service, uh, folding the chairs, something like that. And we, we can we can contribute in, in by in any means uh, to fill the gap. <coughs> there are many the biblical examples uh, uh, who who have had uh, uh, this kind of spiritual uh, the desire and ambition. Last December, some of us uh, attended one thing one thing conference. We learned that Psalm chapter 30, 132, we learned about uh, the Paul's uh, relentless determination, desire uh, to love God. He said, Lord, uh, he, uh, not, he, not he said, he, his descendant said, uh, remembering David, Lord, uh, in 132, uh, Lord, remember David and all his self-denial. He swore on oath to the Lord. He made a vow to the, uh, to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not enter my house or go to my bed. I will allow no sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids till I find a place for the Lord or dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. He, he determined not to sleep until uh, <coughs> Uh, he, he could find a resting place for the Lord until he could see the presence of God uh, filled with this temple. And then later on, uh, when, when David uh, became a king, he uh, pitched uh, the tabernacle to fill in many uh, singers and musicians uh, to praise God, uh, to make a spiritual environment, environment uh, for the presence, presence of God uh, to come down uh, uh, to this nation. And Revelation chapter 3, verse 1 to 6, uh, Jesus, uh, this uh, is part of uh, the Lord saying uh, to the seven churches of the, uh, the tight times. And the Sardis, he's just saying to the, the church in uh, Sardis, uh, His, our Lord said, you have a reputation of being alive, uh, but you are dead. To wake up, uh, I'm talking about Revelation uh, chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. One to six. Uh, later you can, you can find the, the verses. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Jesus knew that your deeds are unfinished in the sight of my God. <coughs> Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know what, at what time I will come to you. <coughs> You know, Jesus uh, knew what's going on in our lives. Uh, mm. Mm. Jesus knew that Steve is fulfilling his duty 
partially or complete or on, on the way or gave up. I mean, you, Jesus wants our hearts uh, to be to dedicated to himself. The Lord really blessed uh, Apostle uh, the Paul's the, the spiritual uh, the desire and ambition then uh, greatly used him a pioneer of gospel work in the early early church period. It's to have a and uh, such such kind of uh, the the spiritual zeal, the fervent desire is God's blessing. Because uh, God cares for them. God's blessing uh, lasts upon them. God will provide them with uh, wisdom, uh, resources, uh, as uh, Paul mentioned, uh, uh, through them the power of signs and wonders accompanied. When when Paul spoke out, the God uh, performed uh, great miracles and signs and wonders. And even uh, God sent many corkers uh, to Paul. It's not a one-man show. And as you, as you will see in chapter 16, uh, there are many, many corkers, uh, uh, companions uh, to Paul's ministry. It's, it's God. Uh, God uh, uh, tied them, united them in, in Christ uh, to to fulfill uh, this great great commission. <laughs> when I when I thought about this uh, these verses, I always thought about uh, this uh, world UVF uh, yeah. around uh, <laughs> 20, 20 years ago. Really, God sent Yun's family to to this place. Uh, uh, to plant uh, this church, pioneer this world uh, UF ministry, along with the uh, Yun's family and uh, Pastor Andy and Tom's family, really joined uh, in um, building up um, uh, the, the church foundation. Then, and many many other, which uh, the Paul's family and, and other church members. And they really participated in this, in this uh, uh, the great work. Mm. But it seems that God wants to bring uh, this church uh, uh, up uh, to a higher level in these days. I don't know what it exactly means. Uh, you know, uh, you, you may feel that. <coughs> they dedicated their lives uh, uh, in laboring to lay uh, a foundation for this church. But it's not, it's not at the end. It's, uh, uh, it's uh, on this uh, on the foundation, uh, building a few beautiful house of God is another one. It's our, our job is not done yet. What, what is your ambition or vision uh, for, the, for this church? Uh, for this, for this, uh, the community, or uh, uh, in your in your personal level, uh, what what is your the ambition? As I mentioned before, uh, we cannot unanimously apply this uh, this fact to the uh, everybody. The we can learn some kind of principle. You know, people are in a different stage. Even even myself for the last. Uh, uh, Couple of years, not couple of years, uh, since I joined, uh, came to Canada back in 2001, I I went through a lot of different stages of my, my life. Then, then <laughs> nowadays God seems to s show me the clear way uh, how uh, myself, our family, uh, dedicate ourselves to the Lord. God gradually, it seems God gradually showing us the way. The problem is, uh, do I have uh, 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 such an the ambition to the Lord? God may, God may help me uh, to, uh, to, to pursue God uh, uh, fearlessly, the fervently, that <coughs> like, uh, like uh, King David who served uh, God in his own generation. God, God called uh, 
uh, the each of us uh, to serve him in his uh, in, in our time in this uh, distinctive uh, unique uh, unique time time frame time frame of God I pray that God may uh, uh, grant us uh, uh, this uh, great uh, spiritual the ambition to see to see the kingdom of God come to this earth. This is the first part of uh, uh, my message. And then chapter 23, verse uh, 33, I briefly touch on uh, the core message. And the Paul, after saying this, uh, uh, verse 22 says, this is why I have often been hindered from uh, coming to you. At that time, the Christians in Rome was, uh, were wondering why, why Paul uh, uh, repeatedly delayed his coming uh, to the Rome. They were wondering. They were wondering. But here, uh, Paul said uh, the reason of the delay was due to uh, his uh, the ministry in the, the Gentile territory. He had, he found uh, no time to come to Rome. He was very busy, tied up with uh, the pioneering work. That's why he didn't come. Now, verse 23, now that there is no more place for me to work in these regions. Uh, I was uh, marveled, amazed at the Paul's statement. There is no more place for me to work in this in this region. Oh, oh, oh Lord, <laughs> I can, I I am far away <laughs> to say like this. I I pray that at the end of my journey in this earth, I can confess to the Lord, there is no more place for me to do. I hope everyone in this place. Uh, will be able to confess to the Lord. I have finished the work. So there's no more place in my area to do. And then uh, <coughs> uh, he he's talking about uh, some helping um, uh, the poor uh, Christians in Jerusalem through the contribution by uh, the Gentile uh, the church. Um, he urges uh, the Christians in Rome uh, to participate in his struggle uh, by praying to God for him. A, there are two prayer topics in the last part of the chapter uh, 15. First one is God's protection for Paul uh, from the enemies. The second one is uh, uniting the Jews and Gentile churches uh, through uh, Gentiles' contribution uh, to the poor Christians in Jerusalem. They, uh, Paul urges um, the saints in Rome uh, uh, to participate uh, uh, in the heart of God at the service uh, for the uh, Christians uh, in, in Jerusalem. Um, <coughs> I'm going to conclude this message. May God uh, may God help us to the glory in Christ Jesus in our uh, service to God. And uh, may God give us uh, some spiritual uh, desire and ambition uh, so that we may see the glory of God. Uh, let me pray. <coughs> Most gracious Heavenly Father, mm. Thank you for uh, teaching us this wonderful uh, the testimony written uh, by the, the Apostle Paul. Lord, help us to have a fervent spiritual desire, even great ambition uh, to the Lord, so that we may fulfill the work you assigned it to each of us uh, that we, we, we wish, we hope that we will be able to confess uh, 
at the time of uh, wrapping up our journey on earth, saying to the Lord, there is no more place to, for me to work, Father. <coughs> Even our church is a critical moment. Lord, help uh, each and every one of us uh, to have a spirit desire uh, to build uh, uh, this body of Christ, the church of God, on the foundation that is built on uh, the by the pioneers of this church. Uh, thank you, I pray in Jesus' name.